And welcome back, ladies and or gentlemen. We are here, the final series of all the re not just NA, of all the regions. This is the, the last, we're going to know everyone in TI. Yeah. After this matchup, it is Optic versus Immortals. I'm joined by BSJ. I'm joined by Blitz. How's it going, boys? I'm ready for some quality NA Dota. Radiant I'm kind of sad to see Complexity go the way they did. Had Pretty, like two favorable games where they were, yeah, they were on, they were set to win them both. Yeah, they looked promising. Like I tuned out of them to watch the other series, the finals yeah. from EU, yeah. and like both times I tuned out, like they were winning, and I'm like, oh, like you know, Complexity's got this one. And then yeah. I'm like, wait, they lost, and it happened twice in a row. So. What happened? But here yeah. we are with Optic, you know, and they get the chance to get their revenge on Immortals. Yep. And in your fashion, they're if they go one one, they're gonna go to TI. Yep. And here's the thing. So this is exactly what happened in Winner's Bay, right? PPD left Naga, and, and Immortals first picked it every single game, and guess what? He left it again and instantly picked Clockwork. They took it last time. Is my mic out? My mic out? Yeah, I, I think, don't know. I think our mics are out. I think. Oh. You. Is it just you? Yeah. I heard somebody's mic. Okay. Grant? Okay. So it looks like Grant's yeah. uh, sideline for a bit. Go ahead, Blitz. Oh, I was just going to say, in the... Previous series, <laughs> they took it. Uh, Optic actually took the Naga themselves. Yeah, and uh, as what Grant basically Five said was, they gave them Naga on Immortals. Mm -hmm. uh, like Optic gave Immortals Naga, and they took Clockwork every single game. But they lost that series two to one. They did um, the same in the uh, unexpectedly on uh, Cole when they saw the. I don't hear Grant either. I don't hear him. Okay, but they kind of deny pick this Shakiro. It's like a follow-up hero to the Naga, as well as uh, going pretty well as a follow-up hero to the to the Clockwork. Is there a chance it's a core Shakiro against Ember? Is that even slightly a chance? No. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to see if they'd spice it up a little bit, you know. That'd be that'd be wild, BSG. Uh, you know. Now is Rubik the pick? People, uh, Kyle, last time I casted with him, said that Rubik was the hardest counter to Shakiro. Pretty good against Clockwork because it's a support that doesn't get countered, uh, like doesn't get killed by Clockwork. You can just lift him and push yeah. him away. Yo, what's and up, yo? They go for Skyrath. They There's go combos. for Sky. I just said that. I literally <laughs> called the picks yeah. bans in that order, and they just come up and they wow. pull this BS. That's smart drafting by Immortals. Yeah. Grant knew. Every I Grant knows your pick. Is that shut smart drafting blitz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew the Naga was going to be picked, but so did PPD. Okay. And I'm sure Immortals knew the clock, right? Like, I think the, the, the Naga and Clockwork, right? Like, both teams yeah. knew that was going to happen, which is kind of weird, right? If you're a captain, like, they know what we're going to do, but we know what they're going to do. Grant, so yesterday, uh, a lot of people, myself Spit included, that. BSJ, Cap, we all doubted Immortals. You were the only person that, had faith. that went for them and had faith. And they ended up winning. Are, can they do it again? Can they actually do it again? It's 1BO3, right? Yeah. It is... Like, you could almost, I mean, it's not scrims, right? But it's literally 1BO3 against an opponent. I'm sure you've scrimmed versus a lot of you. Just don't put it in the mindset of, we have to win this. We're going to TI, right? You'll make mistakes. Just be cool. Play it like a BO3. Play it like you're, you're qualifying for some other event. Yeah. Th that's my advice. I know some people like playing under the pressure. But if you don't, pretend like you're qualifying for just another minor, another major kind of thing. And, and just chill. You heard Kuro say at TI, he said, just don't give a shit. Exactly. Yeah. That was Misery's mantra, too, for the DC team. Yeah. It was just don't care. Embrace the moment. It's all good. You're just playing Dota. Yeah, hey, you're just playing Dota. Guess what hero we just got that we have not seen in, like, actually a pretty long time in our game, right? We yeah, have not we, seen a Beast Mask. had it a decent amount, yeah. but... We just saw it... Uh, was it... I did see it in the one of those, optic, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're bringing it back. They're like, wait a minute. Why is still good here? every region but us picking this? <laughs> huh. In first picking it, too. Was it good in Europe? Yes, yeah, Seth won with it. Yeah, OG. Yeah. I believe yeah. they. I think they lost with it once, but they won with it as well. And well, they take the PL, and this looks like a, a very standard Immortals draft. And they won two one yesterday with standard drafts. So I feel like PL's been getting picked a lot with like a sustained support, such as uh, Warlock and Witch Doctor, the two premier ones. And he kind of just doesn't lose his lane. But I don't think that's the case if you have if you don't have that. Yeah. So I'm a little bit nervous for the PL in the safe lane against this Beastmaster. Probably Leshrac, maybe Beastmaster Jakiro, and. Both are really annoying. Yeah. Either way, they want to. Either way, they want to land it. I only say that like, it might be Leshrac just because Jakiro kind of sucks against Phantom Lancer in lane because you can doppel all of his stuff. Don't you want Lesh though to now be mid? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like, yeah. I think it's a core Lesh, but Jakiro seems a little awkward against PL in the laning hmm. stage. So but right now, our understanding would be that it would be Beast Jakiro off 
No clock. Zai plays that safe lane. He he just moves around yeah. where he's needed, and then less track mid, so they still need the Pie Cat hero. Yeah. So if you're if you're optic, you see this. What is your what is your counter to both the Ember and the PL and the PL's course? Like, what are you asking for here in this position? BSJ, you're Pie Cat. I'm Pie Cat. Buddy, we're about to go to TI. Okay. What do we need? Okay. You carry the game. Okay, well, I think this is all a lane-centric meta, so I'm going to pull up my hero list and put myself in the in the shoes of a Pie Cat. I you don't have much time. Our reserve time. Please, please, Pie Cat. We, we need this, this hero, baby. We got all time please. to think about it. Pie Cat. I think Lifestealer is probably the premier pick. <laughs> Lifestealer, all right. Well, what would be your backup, not Lifestealer? Uh, do you think there's a, another decent one? I mean, no, I it's St. Jug. I swear to God, you say Jug. <laughs> I actually think Lifestealer is by far the best hero. Okay. If not, maybe... I mean, every other thing I feel like in the pool that's good I against PL suffers that. against Sky, like Morphling type things. Yep. Um, well, what about Lycan still in the pool? Is he not good? Is he like not in the pool? Oh, no, oh, no Lycan, he's banned. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm a dirty I, I assume liar. that hero's Jump not in the pool it. anymore. Yep. They might go something still like Void. All right. But I mean, Void, Jakiro, Void, Last Track. Yeah, even like, Axis. Yeah. It's not like the best Void game, but it's I, just, I, I just want them to have some survivable safe laner because they have yeah, heroes they want to play around, but they don't have a hero that kind of does its own thing. And I mean, five go seconds ahead. remaining. It could be a safe lane Lush as well. Isn't it kind of annoying to play Void against Naga because you have to go that like Shadow Blade or Mask of Madness BKB? Yeah, I don't like BKB, Void yeah. nearly as much as I like the other heroes. I'm just saying, like, I would have said Jug, but Grant mm -hmm. insisted that I don't say Jug. We we did. The one game Wind and Rain did win against OG was with that Void build, though, yeah. against Anaga. Like, they did end up winning that, and they had other strong It just cores. fits the rest of their lineup pretty well is all I'm saying. Well, you want Lifestealer. I, wa I think Lifestealer is the best pick. We yeah. do still have a ban. Let's see if Immortals agrees with Void or Lifestealer. Let's see what they think. This they get the absolute the last lanes. pick, too, so that you get to see one more hero. Yep. So you can see the offlane matchup, too. And I'm sure Peter loves that. He's like, I know they're first picking Naga. That means I, I know what they're picking first, and we get the ultimate last pick. Like, yeah. That is like a for sure pick. way better thing. now. Yep. Somebody, I think it was Kyle said, like, when you have PyCat, you want to give him, like, the best possible game. And that's the games that they're often going to win. When he just has, like, that last pick. They don't give it to CCNC. They give it to Pycat. That's probably a smart ban. Yeah, it's, you definitely don't you, want to get Husker just, when you have a first yeah. round Ember. Even if it, and even if it's not, like, a good Husker game, like, we've seen that hero just do work. He has turned into a, not a cheese hero, just a good hero. Yeah. He needs to have a good lane matchup, though. Like, nope. it doesn't have to be, like, the perfect Husker game past the lanes, because we've been seeing, like... Like, Void against Naga, right? It's a counter, but if you're winning the lanes by 4k gold, it really doesn't matter at that point um, exactly who counters who, because your team fights just come much easier. You, like, can play more of the map, and that's what I've been seeing, at least. I feel like matchups don't matter past 20 minutes if you've got better lanes, and that's why I mentioned a hero like Void, even though it's not, like, the best Void game past oh, the laning stage. Well, now you're against a Wind Ranger. So, were you, so you're for sure, you think it's a Wind Ranger core? For sure, not Skyrath. Oh. oh. Okay. And this that was a very quick brood pick. That's going to be 33 then, right? Yep. I didn't consider that. Wait, that's a Pi Cat Beastmaster then? Interesting. Why not? Yeah, I mean, he's why been not? playing off lane heroes. Yeah, he whenever, has. Whenever uh, 33 plays like Visage or Broodmother. Yep. So I think this game kind of comes down to do you believe in the 33 Broodmother? Does he just run over this game? Do you see anything that can stop him? I don't. I, I feel like he outpaces their game. lineup, and it's not like. They're going to lose the other lanes either on Optic. They have like three really strong lanes, and then they have this Brood pick. Does he go mid? Is that the only lane to go here? Like, does it, does Ember do okay against it? I don't know. It's all right, but eventually you just, like, when you Different. don't have flame guard. You're not going to win, but I'm saying, like, there's a difference between against Brood, like, losing and, like, getting ran over. You might. I mean, right? Once he get, If he gets the early medallion, yeah, I feel like true. he would get run over pretty hard. That I mean, where else would Ember go? It's like, Ember's job to there? occupy his lane, though. Something oh. that I really emphasize, if you're against a Brood hero, you have to have somebody that at least slows down the tower taking the snowball effect. Because once Brood takes one try. lane... She then goes to another, right? So you have to slow down it, th the whole process as much as possible. So I hope the Zember goes like really early game items, like treads Aquila, maybe even a medallion of his own. Yep. Just like something to allow him to sit in the lane that Brood's in. Because they'll have a lot of issues otherwise. All right, Blitz, before you leave us, are, are you feeling the Brood? Or do you think Immortals can pull off a crazy upset? Feeling the Brood. Feeling 33 the brood. brood. Let's go. All right, thank you very much. So that means BSJ, me and you, we'll, we'll finish out the region. We'll finish out the day. And we have a Broodmother here played by 33, as we've seen. Yep, shared tangos. He will be going mid. That means MP as well. This I does mean it, it, it's Naga Windranger. Wait, what the? 
Sorry, I was looking at Febby. Febby, did you have you seen Febby's uh, statue in base? I have not. Banana Slam Jamma number zero fanboy, 2016 effigy. It's the one all the way at the bottom. All the way at ben the Volker. bottom. Invoker. This guy. I haven't. I've never seen that actually. I, <laughs> act I literally was trying to click on Wind Ranger and I clicked on an axe and I was like, wait a minute. It's my coke. It's even got two commands. So Damn, that's not bad. There's at least two people in the in yep. the world that agree. Yep. But that is a fantastic effigy. But. <laughs> I, I do feel like the brood pick is good, but I don't think it's like game winning brood pick. So I, I'm just gonna call mortals for the sake of like I think they can win with this draft. Not necessarily saying that I favor them. Yeah. But yesterday they kinda caught us off guard, so I'm just not gonna be I'm gonna I wanna be like you, Grant. I don't wanna be like everyone else, you know, just saying they're gonna lose because they're the worst yeah. team. No. Ve and Velo Windranger, right? He had that game that what, nineteen two in like thirty one yeah. game. He knows how to play they, and they, they always dominate their lanes, and we've talked about it. If they can dominate a Jakiro, Beastmaster, and lane, they have a really good shot. So I, I think it really does. You've said it. The, these first 10 minutes mean a lot more than they used to before. And Well, Febby just going to get chased out of the lane. They'll get both runes bottom, and Dyer will get both two. runes bottom, my bad. Uh, optic top, yeah. 2-2. Two, two. Pretty simple. That's a solo Leshrac for now. I assume we'll see... Zai or PPD TP bottom or yeah, a lot of four positions or supports in general are like at least starting the game at the bounty runes at yeah. the opponent lane. But I wouldn't be surprised if he just cogs like he is and then TPs. I don't think he, yeah yeah okay. I was about to say you can't afford you can lose a lane in one wave. You yeah. really can't because they'll get level two and you don't and then you just lose the lane. So. Oh and look, Rioya is getting destroyed right now. A lot of Phantom Lancers is being forced to take Doppel level one. No mangoes either. That's a little spread. He goes double. Double Tango, zero Mangoes. He wants the stick, I think, against this lane because he's against smart. Beastmaster, so he's going Quelling straight quelling, the stick. Actually. Oh, yeah. You First. go Quelling just to get a few CS because you actually have less damage than Beastmaster. Yep. And then you go that stick later. Some middle. Ember is 4-0. Brood, 3-0. Brood doesn't win this at, like, level 1 or 2. But once you get, like, right, the Spiderlings building up, level 3 spawn Spiderlings, this is when the lane just gets terrible. MP actually leveled Side of Fist. Maybe he'll go zero, like, like 2-4 or something, you know? Like some no weird side of fist build, because it hits all the spiders. It's yeah. not bad. Doesn't, don't they have a, they have a ton of regen in the web, though, right? Like, if you yeah. don't kill them, it's pointless, kind of. They have, yeah, they have zero armor, though. Yeah. So, I don't know how, like, I, I, I've never played the matchup, so I really don't know, but it could be enough to kill them with the flame guard. Yeah, but here we see, Zai already did get the pull. They're fighting over it. They will get some last hits here. It's who, who gets the last hits on the neutrals? Most importantly, though, CCNC is able to get like a creep wave to himself while Zai is contesting this big camp. Yep. This is almost going to be level three if he gets it solo. It's going to be nice. So CCNC, he's been known as like the, I mean, optics mid laner, obviously, right? He dominates it. Is, is it way different playing from mid lane to a side lane? Even if it's like, you know, a last track. Maybe just suicides to the tower, gets his mana back. Yeah, I feel like. The skill, like, you use the same skills, like creep aggro and all that stuff to win your lane, but yep. it just applies differently in the side lanes than it does in the mid lane. I think it's uh, quite a bit easier to go from mid lane to side lane than it is to go from side lane to mid lane, as we've seen a lot of, like, in the past from players. And 33 was some cool micro, like, whenever he yeah. has flame guard on, he spins so some spiders at him, but the rest of them he micros them away. And, and he, he might be in some trouble here. He does use a sleight of fist, but you're just going to surround him up right here. Oh, he actually misses an attack. He doesn't want to take it. And look at that. Oh, my God. We were worried about that. He gets level four, gets the kill so easily once he gets level two spawn spiralings even. And, well, that is not a good sight. We talked about the Brood running you over, and that's a pretty good start if you're the Brood. Yeah, and it's, it's a snowball effect with this hero, so it doesn't get any better every time that happens. Yeah, because, I mean, you have Flame Guard, but that cooldown, my bad. Missed the kill bottom. Velo just dies. He just gets cogged in place, and you can't get out. I'm, wow. It's hard to believe he was able to get the cogs on him without boots just because Windran, uh, Windranger having Windrun to run away yeah. from you. So must have caught him off guard. Nope. And so these lanes, it's already threes. Or obviously one of them was a suicide by the Skyrath to get mana back, but it's still gold. Gold adds up to the team. And now it looks like they're going on the back lines again. Zai just running at him, harassing him on the lane. Let, look at CC and C doesn't even care. He's like, I'm just farming Zai. Thank you for your duty in this bottom lane. Yep, and that's why you put these like melee tanks with these range cores, because the range cores just have that problem of getting ran at, so Zai fixes that or alleviates that pressure just by range running at them yep. so the Leshrac can farm. But they do fort the creeps, I think, for top or mid. Yeah, it's for top. For top. Um, just, uh, just a great way to help pressure the lane and help you like be able to keep diving underneath tower. Yep. And if you didn't, uh, Peter actually stopped the pull. It looked like Febby was going to get it, but Peter makes the creeps aggro onto him, and then no pull. So Pycat continues to harass him under. 
And man, bottom line, Velo. Velo's 14 and 1. We've seen him just dominate these sort of offlanes, and he's struggling this time versus Zy Clockwork. Yeah, Clockwork's a hero that he kind of just makes you play, like, look, looking over your shoulder. You're always scared that he's going to run behind you, and it actually does make you miss random CS in the lane just because you're so focused on making sure you don't get caught out of position. While Blushrak's really under minimal threat, right? So CC and C, all he has to do is focus on hitting creeps. And is Bebby is once again dying to tower. Is this a thing? Like, yeah, does it again? Twice? I, I know once, right? Okay, so this back, gold is always a little weird. Is it actually 126 gold each, or is it just... Like... I've been told it's each. I mean, that's what it says, right? Yeah, I, but I haven't. T I know it's that's a lot of gold. It's really buggy. Yeah, I that's mean, if like you're giving bounty them 600 rooms. gold. That's I don't think that's how it early. actually is. But, but top, right. they might be in trouble on Pycat. Does use the doppel to remove that dual breath from Jakiro. Lance Needs that vision for Lance, but he's solving. But they, he should go down here. Yep. Right. And that's the value of killing yourself underneath tower, I guess. You get the lane back. Pycat already 26 and 5, though. Rioya 20 and 2. Zai looking to loop, loop around on mid. MP's not level 6 yet. He's going to get him. No mana for Cogs, but he uses the mango. And the, those spiders have free pathing. He's just going to go down here. Oh, my. That's a disaster. Great play by Zai, knowing Brood 6. The Ember's not. He's at the advantage. He's yeah, exactly. going to be able to dive. As long as Ember's just not 6, right? Like, if he's yeah. 6, you're not ever getting that kill. So they get the kill early. Now this tower. Because uh, they didn't use their glyph. Okay, so it wasn't a glyph for glyph top. He still has it. And the tower actually hasn't taken too much damage. But he will be level 7 on this brood now. And oh, my goodness. Look, he doesn't even show when he TPs. Because he might. Oh, no. Yeah, he Is he just dead? He might be. Has the sleight of fist. It's a lot of invulnerability. TP coming out. 33 is going to run. I love the cog. So it automatically pushes. Get to push him. Nope, dude. He doesn't get pushed back. 33 in a little bit of trouble. But guess what? You got that unobstructed. You're just moving around. You don't care. Those spiderlings give no bounty anymore, though, so he just doesn't it's care broke. if they die. Like, yeah, it sucks because you lose the offensive potential, but you'll get them back pretty quick. Look, he just TP'd back, right? He, he just died. He has to shrine already, and that is not pretty. So what lane? Is there a lane going decently for him right now? It seems like Rioya's farming, right? Yeah, top seems 30. like a wash. Right. What's, what's the net worth? That's, I think that will really tell us. Let's go over Yeah, that. top's basically a wash, but the other two lanes are about 1,000 gold on average advantage, and that's that's quite scary. Yeah. Because as we've seen time and time again, that that advantage snowballs very quickly with like the bounty runes at 10 minutes and yeah. and the level advantages early. You're uh -oh. seeing this mid lane's basically like this vacuum of pressure. Yeah, look at Dubu. Yeah. Run Dubu. He does he want to commit a web? He sure does. Of course, uh, an early point oh net, but it won't God. matter. What are you gonna net all of them? You can't. And this is we we talked about the Husker cheese ban last. They got they got qu quite the other last pick hero for him in a, in a perfect game. Top lane and Pycap might be in some trouble. Getting gone on by the concussive nope. plus the lance, and this he's probably enough. going to... Oh, he's trying to take it with the PL, and he gets nice. it. That's, that's super big, important, right? actually, to give kills to cores right now. Especially him, because they're falling gold. behind. Yeah, 400 gold. It's not bad. 33, obviously, going to be level 8 now. Bottom. Yeah, we looked at it early. He has the Aquila on Lestrix, so he has Arcane Boots Aquila. If anyone leaves this lane, right, if Velo just leaves, he's taking a tower. It feels like that's every lane for Optic. That's the thing is you can't leave in this meta because people just take your towers, and then if you lose that lane, you can't occupy it anymore, and then they take all your yep. other towers. So now you have this Broodmother hero that is an issue, but you can't deal with it for a long time, and all you can do is keep sticking this oh Ember here and hope for the best. He and never even commits his here, right? He just medallion throws the the little spiderites, spiderlings as well on him. Yeah, the goal is do that once or twice, and then the third, second or third time Heavy. you kill him. There's about to be a fight up here. Dubu's coming as well. Pycat will get rooted down. Really, just going to continue to right claim. This should be a kill. Who will get it though? It looks like it will be Rioya gets another right click kill. Zai with the rocket. They have to relieve pressure on back. one of the lanes, right? Yeah. So they're choosing top. They know they can't deal with Broodmother yet. They're just going to leave Wind Ranger alone, and they're like, if we can get our PL off to a decent start, maybe. Uh, we can afford to leave him alone later, but either way, it's still looking pretty rough for Immortals already, down by 2k at 8 minutes. They're getting kills right now, and they're still, like, the net worth advantage is still growing for Optic, and that's what we keep seeing time and time again, at least in this region, yeah. and it seems, like, ho hopeless, almost, yeah. and Op 33 is already farming the enemy ancients. Th this has to be, like, where you're, you're in one of these matches, and you're like, we have 33. We got a guy who can play Brew. We got a guy who can play the Spider. Like, 33 seems so valuable in this yeah. current meta, especially, like, just him as a player. Oh, bottom lane. They are going to try to find CC and C. They should. This should be a kill. You do have to expend three heroes, but hey, you kill a free farming core, you get some damage. You the get wrap some around, gold though, on Velo. 33. Nope, not going to mount anything. This is really important, though. They have to ignore the Brood. 
and basically say, we Peter. need like, to four-man gank you when we have the levels. Oh, Peter almost goes down, but instead they're going to turn it on Rayoya. Does miss the axis, so it won't stag him on Pycat. And now it looks like Medallion first Radiant's on Beastmaster as well. I hope CCNC just goes top here. Nice, he does. Yeah, he knows that Immortals had to make a big rotation to bottom, so they can't actually help this PL. This PL's half health with no regen, and they see this. Like, they always call this kind of stuff out. Radiance and then you're just like, this PL actually just has to walk away. He can't do anything. He either has to walk or TP. And that's a free tower for them. And we take towers a lot faster. Uh -oh. oh, no. The Doppelganger TP. Or he eats through. That is that one quelling late tree. If you're a carry play, you better know that. And it looks like he will get away. But even then, they're getting the tower for free. And well, it looks like they might trade top for bottom, right? That's true. He did TP bottom as well. I always look at like what's happening on the map elsewhere, though, and okay. you look at the mid lane, right? And yeah. you see a level four clockwork like free farming, and it's like, yeah, MP can come up with flame guard, but he isn't even happy being here because the brood mother is always lingering. You know, she's she's waiting for him to walk out of position. So CCNC gets top tower. Rioya gets bottom tower. And now we see a lot of radiant heroes middle. Where is Ember gonna go to? He's gone. This is really important that they're doing this. Ember's the only hero that can possibly handle this Broodmother at this point. Not killing her or anything, but at least push the lane out. Just don't let her take your tier two. Look at this. And it's funny, right? This is the Dyer's triangle of farm, but Brood can just take it over so easily. What are you going to do to kill him? There's so many trees there and cliffs. You need, I think you need Sky Six. You need to smoke with Naga. Uh, yeah, and Naga, Net, Ember, and Sky Six. So they need at least three heroes, and one of them being Skyrath Mage. And once they get those levels in farm, I, I think they're waiting for that. They, they have asked themselves that same question. And they're going to say, once we get these items or these levels, we're going to smoke gank this brood ASAP. When you deal with these kind of heroes that you don't have natural counters to, Timber Saws, Brood Mothers, you have to say, what is our exact moment we can kill this guy, get those items and levels, and go immediately. Until then, ignore him. Well, Peter down there in the not alive lane, but look at they're gonna run into the jungle. Not Peppy is gonna be lane. here. That's gonna be an easy stun, easy kill. See, since he gets it, and he gets the hook. He will land it on Velo, and Velo's trying to right click and run away. Loses mana, but level three, no points in shackle. Probably saved her with the level three wind run there. Yeah, no mana for uh, on Leshrac to like slow him up or anything, so. They will shrine. Yeah, the not so alive lane, it's, it's just one of those things where I like the way Immortals is actually delegating their resources right now. They, uh -oh. are, they are doing what they need to do. Oh, I thought I thought Brood just saw Pebby. Level 12 Brood with that. Not only that, he is the Hellbear Smasher now as well with that Helm of the Dominator. And something's about to happen here. I Those don't know Those spiders what. have so much health regen, actually. They have yeah. 18 health regen. It's a decent amount for when a When they only have hero. 280 Dude, look at health it. total. Yep. Oh, I like that, though. They Are they going to get any? Not any of them. One. Two. That's like... Six gold, six XP. I saw nine gold. Oh, nine I saw gold. a niner, my friend. Oh, my God. So get a little, and now you, this is the problem. You see 33. He knows, like, he's never having downtime. It's the biggest thing, right? Like, you see Rioya, he's like, do I farm this? He does, but that 33 is always rude. moving. Yeah. As you see, 2,000 above his own team, who's in second. And now Tower is pinged out, whether it's Radiant wanting to push or Dire defending. Dubu's up here with a sleep. So what, what, what's your thing? Do you just go for a full fight with sleep set up? You, they have the six on Sky. They need to smoke, like, to the brute at some point. Like, as soon as po they possibly uh -oh, think they can. Oh, Zai sees Dubu. He just plays the ward. Bottom lane. This Bottom lane as well. Looks like they're going to go for Peter. They get it top lane. They do hook in as well. Dubu is going to try to get away. Lightning comes up stunned. I think and your own safe lane is deemed a specific term. Do you remember what it's called? Yeah, I, I just know you don't want to be there. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. And now, are both tier two? No? Attack. Looks like Rayoya's going to struggle taking that bottom Dyer's tower, but this top one with the Edict so easy on the backside. MP, he's going for it. He's going to be able to kill Zai. Doesn't even have to use a remnant, but uh oh, do they have a stun? The roar comes out. Now they can chain together. Stun flies. See you later. Even with the, the, the flame guard, not enough. And now 33 takes your tower. And look at Peter. He's not even level six. He's not even macro pirate defending these, but he defends their tier two so easily. Just him. The thing I've seen about this patch is that the mid tier one and your own safe lane tier one are kind of like gateways to one another. Once you take one of them, it becomes much easier to take the other. No. And then when both are down, that tier two top becomes really easy to take as well. And that's the problem with this Broodmother Snowball is since she got the first tower, it makes the second tower super easy. And now the third tower becomes easier. And now your jungle is, is danger zone. You yep. can't go there anymore. I'm looking at the hero levels, and that pretty much sums up this game, how good this brood, brood pick was. He's level 13. The next close on either team is 10. Yeah. And I everyone's mean. right there.
for a lot of people watching, for me, it's like, yeah, it's one thing that it's a good brood game, but it's really important that when the, you have these players like 33, it's not only that it's a good brood game, oh but he knows exactly God. how to play it. Yep. And that's what makes it a perfect brood game, right? Like, it's not something that anybody can do just like, oh, it's a good brood game. We're picking brood and winning. You, and it's just impressive, definitely. like, oh. to see exactly how he knows how to play. Fake Dubu will live. <laughs> he gets out. He's chill. he's like, I'll defend this tower, boys. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, just gives them more spiderlings. And now look at this. They are going for the base. With that medallion, look at this. Brood has 18 armor, has the pipe, the helm, his own medallion. Well, they don't Ow. have a glyph. This should just be a free tier three. It looks like even if they just suicide all the spiderlings, they don't have to suicide. They're just going down. He's going for the melee axe. They actually have no way to kill these spiders. Yep, except that sleight of fist power shot we the see. Pipe. But he misses in the pipe. Oh, look at how glowing. That is green. I thought... Thought they really do have the green wall. He hooks in. He's gonna hit one, but the sleep comes out immediately. But Velo's dying to the cogs plus the edict. Oh my goodness, he will get out. But this is not a good reset. Like everyone's still full HP on the radiant. They're just gonna take a melee rax. It looks like in comes MP. Can he do anything to stop? Net flies out on 33, holding him in place. But even if you ult him, right? Zyle just stand there with him. He'll yeah. tank him for his butt. I love the way Broodmother is being played now. You know, like the laning stage is the snowball effect that we've been seeing and. Rather than like going this like Deso Mask of Madness type farming build, you just go items that continue to snowball your tower advantage, your lane pressure. Yeah. We saw Moo do it earlier, right? On yeah. I believe they they did win that game. That was one of the weird was, ones. Yeah, he went drums, pipe, like he went a lot of just tier two items and yeah. it owned. And then you get like AC and stuff later. Yeah. It's just like and then you take the spiderling damage talents. Like the health and damage if you ever get there. Yeah. And your spiders are almost unkillable because of the regen plus the auras and the like, the you know the armor, the magic resistance. Ooh, bottom, looks like a gank from Immortals, but they can't quite find it. There's four of them here. Power shot won't scout anything out, and now they're they're still looking. They do get the ulti up. They will find Pycat, who has a shadow blade. It won't matter. He goes down. They do get a pick up. They're going for more now. CCNC, that would be a nice one. Slide of fist gets the bolas on top of him. The cogs will push back and zone. Look at that perfect zone. You can't even walk over. You get pushed back up. Nice play by Zai, but. They do get a Beastmaster. Obviously, it's a 7k lead. You're losing a, a set of racks, but a kill's a kill, BSJ. Yeah. Even if you wish him no ill. Th that was a rhyme if you missed oh, it. Oh, okay. I was wondering if you are going somewhere with nah, that. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying. All right. <sighs> Mjolnir on the Ember. Obviously, that's, you know, it's AoE, right? The Sleight of Fist plus that. You could you could clear the Spiderlings decently then, right? Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. You're we'll talking Maelstrom, I assume. Yeah, Maelstrom. And, but the problem is it's like it takes so long for the Sleight of Fist to like, actually kill hit the Spiders that the pipe and the regen and all that stuff, it, I feel like they've regen like half their health by the time you actually get to each individual exactly. That's the thing. The regen spider. under, yeah. It feels like they always have regen. Like yeah. Just a straight regen run on. And look at them. They're just po they're eating this tower alive. Look at them. They're so adorable, too. And well, you see and I have different, different, different. You really don't think adorable. these are adorable? Wait up! Hello. Okay, maybe. dude, they are okay, really you're right, cute. You're they right, are you're right. so okay, cute. Okay, you know what? I take that back. You're right. From top down, I could understand. It's kind of like a Porsche. Like, you, it's like not good, but then you look at it and you're like, ah, it's all right. Is it like one of those things that like good from afar, but far from good? Yes, exactly. Like has, yes. My finally goodness. on the same wavelength. Thank here. you, Aristotle. You finally learned Socrates, and we're going in for the Roche pit. 33, he's just going to scoop it up right here. He has 3.3k. What do you go? Do you go? AC, almost certainly. Just go AC? All right. I think, I mean, that's what I've been seeing. Just some aura I item. I don't think there's anything left to get. The spiders really do a crap ton of damage, and you might as well just keep amping that up. Has the cooldown reduction talent at this point, so now you can keep spawning more spiders. And your hero isn't actually vulnerable in this game, so you just have to make it so you're even harder to kill, and you're just even more of a threat Ooh. during it. Didn't even have a sentry down, but MP knew something was up. From behind, but go. no, I mean, they can't even kill Brood once, let alone twice. Yeah, what are you going to do? And look at the CCNC, he's just dancing around the jungle, has his, has his bloodstone. Oh, the courier feels courier bad. will man. go down. That's only a stout shield, but stout shield, two sentries, just losing it. It's more team gold you don't want to give away. your 8k down. And look at this, they're just going to run at him. Slight of Fist trying to bring these Spiderlings down. They're still chasing. Annette's going to go on 33. He's going to tank a little, but he has the pipe. All that magic is on the back side. Febby's already dead. They're going for 30. They do nothing. See you later, Dubu. Roared up. CCNC will die on the backside to Rioya as well as Velo, though. But now they're losing their entire base up top. Effigies go down. They do get that Bloodstone, though, down to nine charges, as well as getting Velo a little bit of gold.
Yeah, CCNC doing his thing, making sure they think they have a chance on Immortals. But Smart. I, I think that's just giving them a false sense of security. It's the long stage. con, right? Because you know it's the yes. best of three. Even if you're think if you're 33, you're like I've already won this game, and then you're like, but what if we mind game them? Yes. What if by they making think them? they have like a five percent chance to win, and then they get disappointed? The key to disappointment, Grant, is giving <gasps> oh. them hope in the first place. Yep. Oh, Regen. Vela doesn't want it. He wants Vela it. Vela wants it. Oh, he j Peter. Oh, the flare. It cancels. cancels. It. Nice, nice play by Zai. A quick little snipe. And he is going to uh, assault Kiros. Already has the play mill, so he has 20 armor just chilling. When do you push up? Do you just go? Why don't they go uphill right now? I think you wait. For, how long do they have? They have three minutes on this age. I think you actually wait the AC. Or you wait for a kill, which is what they're doing now. They're smoking Oh, up. no, they have the AC, so here you go. Oh, Perfect full, timing. It yeah, looked I didn't like see he that still had, Yeah, I was He weird. had it all, like, queued up. I guess he bought it all at once. Okay, yeah, I was about to say, I thought he had more gold than that last time yeah. I checked. <laughs> So I think you uh, you definitely just take this AC and you slow siege with the with the spiders and maybe diabolical edict as well. There they we actually go. have so much tower damage when you look at it. Edict, Shakiro, Liquid Fire. They have a lot. I, you know, even just the Beastmaster aura sitting yeah. behind the spiders. With the spiders, yeah. oh my! God. I, I actually did not even consider that, and it's, it was scary before I considered that. So here we go. Are they going uphill? Not yet. Now they are. Hello, everyone. We're uphill. Take the spiders down to half. They regen it back and like. Four Net seconds. comes out, will get ultied up. He has the Aegis. He's already actually popped his ulti. He's still just standing tower. He does not care right now. He didn't pop his ulti, by the way, but he's just attacking. Lance will fly. If you want to die, yeah, he dies like perfectly outside the base right now. You have full HP mana. Stunned up is the Ember from the Helmet Dominator creep. It goes down, though. MP gets a decent jiggle. Hook on the backside. They're going to try to find you, but guess what? He can't cast Song of the Siren because he's stuck inside. Now he can. He does get out, but he's silenced. We're going to see MP immediately drop. Dubu can cast it. He will finally a buyback. Where's the setup, BSG? I need to know. What do they do Follow right up now? With the, with the Skywrath Q coming onto this Broodmother, but that's about all I see. They have the Searing Chains on the Brood. He's locked in place, but that's just saying, hey, stand here for a second. You can come get us later. But Roya is actually focusing him down. Yep. We're up on the Illusion, so it's not quite enough. Like, they don't hit the... Uh, I mean, it doesn't even matter. It's, they're all just Who dying Who cares now. if you don't hit the real one yeah. if he just takes all the damage from the AoE spell MP, damage? That's a dieback. This is probably the Gs. Yep, we see him dropped, and... Well, I'm not saying Optic Cheese already do a game one. It was just, it was an outdraft, right? Yeah. Like, if, if you say it's a cheese, it also means it's an outdraft. Because yeah. if you're put in position to cheese someone, that means that you outdrafted them the first four or five picks. Yeah, I, something I mentioned yesterday, but just to everyone who wasn't here, is teams used to be prioritizing that first pick in the draft. But I yeah. feel like they're seeing that all the, the draft strategy that I've been looking at is that you take second pick, in the first round, you take a core that doesn't lose its lane. Okay. So in this case, Leshrac. We've seen Bloodseekers, PLs, that kind of stuff. And then you have this last pick cheese. So it used to be that first pick would get two lane wins because you had three counter picks right. between second, third, and fourth pick. But and no now longer. you take this core that doesn't lose, and then you have this last pick yeah. that just – wins the game for you. Right, they, and they banned Husk. I mean, Husker might have got picked if Brood got banned. We don't yeah. know. But joining us back, it is going to be the lovely Blitz Dota, a 21-minute victory. I mean, is there anything else to say about – give us something besides Broodmother owned them, if you can. <laughs> I mean, Broodmother did own them. Yeah. That was that was how like, you want to play a Brood draft, where it's like you don't have to – like. You don't feel super pressured, but it's very easy for you to go high ground. They had, what, the Jakiro, like, there's Beast easier Master, ways. Yeah. yeah, there's just, like, easy ways for them to go high ground. They played very definitively. Um, they didn't hesitate, which I feel sometimes, like, I think they they did what Cole did, but better, right? Like, they won their lanes, but then they continue to snowball, and they just, like, continue to execute. They never let up the pressure, right, ever. Yeah, and then when they went for the high ground attempt at bottom, it was just, like, clean. They found the initiation onto the Naga. They simultaneously catch the Ember. Like, they just made it hard, because... After a certain point, yes, the PL and the Ember will come online and they'll be very good against those heroes, but they it just never got to they that point. They didn't get to play Dota. Yeah, they just didn't get to play Dota. Yep. The way I look at it is briefly is the way they played, if you don't understand pressure from a viewer's perspective, watch Immortal's perspective of that game. You have it where this Brood is out-leveling the, the Ember, so you just Hard. have this clockwork rotate behind the Ember, and it's like your choice is to either die in lane or not even just give up the tower. And then they do that in multiple lanes. So yeah. one lane is like play defensively with three heroes, yeah. and the other lane or two is just dying with towers. And it just feels so helpless when you fall behind a hero like Brood, and the Steamroll just yep. runs you over. Well, before we go to a quick break, I need to know, is Immortals going to first pick a Naga and PPD going to pick up another Clockwork? Do you think that's going to happen for like the fourth meeting between these two? Or is it finally going to change? Both I mean, teams seem content. Yeah, they, 
both teams seem okay with it. Because even in the game that they lost with it, uh, Immortals, they just did it again. Yeah. And they just did it again here. So you're thinking we are going to see the Nog into Clockwork once more? Yeah, sure, why not? All right. Sure, why not? Well, guys, we might be one game away from the end of all the regionals. We will know every team in TI or Ken Immortals. They're here. They're like, wait up. We're, we, we were one series away. We're still only one series away. We can still do this, boys. Settle down. We got brooded. Let's not let that happen again. And we get back, when we get back to this game, when BTS gets back from their break, we're going to take this game. So we are going to take a short break. And when we get back, game number two, Optic versus Immortals, baby. <laughs> 